Hello and welcome to another GCSE revision video and in this video we're going to be looking at algebra. Now, algebra is about substituting letters for numbers which brings us to the meaning of x. Until now I've used the letter x either in upper or lower case to indicate multiplication but in algebra we use x either in upper or lower case to indicate an unknown quantity or many quantities, or every quantity. This means we can't use it to indicate multiplication anymore. To get round this problem, the rule is that if there is no symbol between two letters, or between a number and a letter, then it is assumed that they are multiplied together. Now there are several ways that people write A times B. For example, they might use A and then a cross, which may or may not look like the letter X. They might just have nothing and just have the two letters together, and that means A times B. They might use a dot, so A dot B means A times B. They might put them in brackets and put the brackets next to each other, so you've got brackets A and then brackets B, and that also means A times B. Or they may use an asterisk, which on a UK keyboard is Shift 8. And all of that means A times B. So in algebra, XY means X times Y. And 2X means 2 times X. 2xy means 2 times x times y. It doesn't mean 2 times y. OK, we're not married to the idea of having x and y, but it is common to use x and y. So I am going to use a and b just to show that we're not forced to use x and y in algebra, that we can use any letter of the alphabet, including x and y. Now, many computer programs and websites don't allow you to type an index above the line, so it's become conventional to use the circumflex accent symbol, which on a UK keyboard is Shift 6, and that indicates that the number is an index. So A with the circumflex and then B means A raised to the power B, and if you get the circumflex before the number, it still means that it's an index, but in this case, this would, uh, the circumflex for, and then the radical symbol, and then A, means the fourth root of A. And it's just so much easier to type shift 6 than it is to look in your character map and try and find the, the superscript and subscript numbers. Um, so people still use the circumflex accent a lot to mean that a number or letter is going to be in the superscript. When using the circumflex accent to indicate an index, be aware that convention dictates that only the letter or number immediately to the left of the circumflex accent is raised to the power, and it is only raised to the power of the number or letter immediately to the right. So, a circumflex 2b means a squared times b. It does not mean a raised to the power of 2b. If you want to write a raised to the power of 2b, you must put the 2b in brackets. So a to the power 2b is written a to the power or a circumflex, open brackets, 2b, close brackets. In the same way, a, b, circumflex, 2 means a, b, squared, or a times b, squared. It doesn't mean a times b, all, squared. If you want to write that both a and b are squared, you must use brackets. So a times b all squared is written open brackets a, b, close brackets, and then your circumflex and then 2. 
There are also different ways to indicate division. So A slash B is the same as a fraction with A on the numerator and B on the denominator, which is the same as A and the divided sign and B, which is the same as A multiplied by B raised to the power of negative 1, all of which are different ways of saying A divided by B. Now, just as with the circumflex accent, only the first letter or number to the left of the slash or divide symbol is divided only by the first letter or number to the right of the slash or divide symbol. So 2 plus a slash b is the same as 2 plus a divided by b, which is equal to 2 plus a on the numerator and b on the denominator of a fraction. Now, if you wanted the 2 plus a to be on the numerator of the fraction with the b on the denominator, you just use brackets. So, in this case, you would put the 2 plus a in brackets and then the slash b or the divide sign and b. Now, these are not arbitrary rules that somebody just sat down and thought of sometime, and they're, they're not designed to limit your creativity or artistic license. They're, they're not there to stifle you and they're not there to beat you over a head with. These rules stem from the basic order of operations and determine how we evaluate algebraic expressions and solve algebraic equations. If we remember our order of operations, brackets are always at the top of the pyramid and they're always evaluated first. Then powers and roots are evaluated on the same priority as each other. And then multiplication and division are evaluated on the same priority as each other. And then addition and subtraction are evaluated on the same priority as each other. Now this is not an arbitrary thing. We don't... No, nobody just sat down and thought, oh, I don't know, might, wait, maybe we'll do brackets first and then multiplication. No, maybe we'll put powers and roots before multiplication. Let, let's just swap it around. I, that looks about right. Let's force everybody to do things in that order because we say so. It, it doesn't work like that. Mathematics doesn't work like that. This all grows logically from our very definition of our operations. We can think of multiplication as repeated addition. A, uh, 2 times A is the same as A plus A. And we can think of powers as repeated multiplication. So A squared is A times A. And because powers are built upon multiplication, and multiplication is built upon addition, we have to evaluate them in that order. And just as our order of operations logically grows out of the very definition of those operations, so the laws of algebra logically grows out of the order of operations. So let's have a go at solving an equation, say 2x plus 1 is equal to 7. Now, if we just ignored our order of operations and just said, oh, we'll do it in any order we like. Let's say divide by 2 first, so x plus 1 is equal to 7 over 2. So x plus 1 is equal to 3.5. And then we'll subtract 1 from both sides. So x is equal to 3.5 minus 1, which is 2.5. So, ah, x is equal to 2.5. Another person might come away and say, well, no, you, you subtract the 1 first and then you divide by 2 and that gets a totally different answer for x, which is right. This is why we need the order of operations. This is why it's very important to do things in the right order. If you imagine baking a cake, if you chose to bake the flour and then bake the eggs, and then bake the sugar, and combine the baked ingredients, you're not going to get a cake. You have to combine the flour, the eggs, and the sugar, in, and then you can bake the cake in order to get a cake. How we'd go about solving this is determined by the order of operations. Multiplication takes priority over addition, so if we're trying to work backwards to find x, we must deal with the lowest priority first. 
the unknown quantity labelled x was first doubled, then a 1 was added to the result in order to arrive at the number 7. Working backwards then, we first subtract 1 from the 7 to find the doubled value for x, which of course is 6. Now that we know the doubled value for x is 6, we can just halve that to find the actual value for x. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so the unknown quantity x was in fact 3. Now mathematics is a very concise symbolic language with its own rules of grammar and syntax. We can actually replace the whole sentence, the unknown quantity x was first doubled, then a 1 was added to the result in order to arrive at the number 7. We can replace that whole sentence with just 2x plus 1 equals 7. See, what we did there, we got rid of that entire paragraph without losing any of the meaning. Again, the next paragraph says, working backwards, we first subtract 1 from the 7 to find the doubled value of x, which of course is 6. Again, we can replace that entire paragraph with just two lines of text that say 2x is equal to 7 minus 1, 2x is equal to 6. Again, we've replaced the entire paragraph without losing any of the meaning. And again, this bottom paragraph, now we know the doubled value of x is 6. We can just halve that value to figure out what x was. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so the unknown quantity x was in fact 3. We can replace those two sentences with two symbolic lines of code. x is equal to 6 over 2, and x is equal to 3. Again, much more concise, but conveys exactly the same meaning. OK, well, so much for the theory. Let's have a go at putting that into practice. Let's pick something like x over 5 plus 10 is equal to 25. Okay, so we remember our order of priorities. The value, the unknown value x was first divided by 5, and then the result of that division was 10 was added to it, and that gave us the value 25. So to work backwards, we have to take away the 10 first. So x over 5 is equal to 25 minus 10 is 15. Now the value for x was divided by 5 to get 15, so that's 1 fifth of x is 15. So to find the value for x, we multiply 15 by 5. So x is equal to 15 times 5. And 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7, so x is equal to 75. OK, I hope that was helpful. Why don't you make up some examples for yourself and have a go at practicing doing a bit of algebra, and we'll cover some more um, simple algebra in the next video. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to wish you all the best with your revision and all the best with your exams, and I'll see you in